Hello everyone. I hope everyone is enjoying their Saturday and or has enjoyed their Saturday. Um, this video is not part of my um, The Trial of Cousin Eddie. Um, this is because the January 6th riot trials or insurrection or whatever they're calling it have come up. So I... Um, so I've been watching that and just hearing a bunch of stuff on the news, and I saw some things about Ashley Babbitt, which, as many of you know, I am like a political junkie, but after the January 6th stuff and the and the and uh, and sleepy Joe Biden getting in, I completely withdrew from politics. That's how I ended up in the, you know, royal Twitter or royal YouTube, as we've been called. Um... So I didn't really know much about Ashley Babbitt, and then I looked her up today, and I didn't realize she was in the Air Force for 14 years. And the fact that, and she was murdered that day um, by a police officer. So I'll get into that, but it made me, like, think of, you know, she was in the airport, Air Force, so out of all the people killed that day, a 14-year Air Force soldier, soldier regardless, was killed. The first one that day. So I thought that was interesting. Then which made me go on to think of Prick Harry and Company. Uh, specifically Better Up doing the Air Force. Um, better Up deal for like 3.7 billion-ish dollars. Um, and it made me think of Lloyd, his relationship with Biden and Lloyd. Uh, Prick Harry's relationship with Biden and Lloyd Austin. So, and, and no bid contracts, which I actually, no bid contracts with the Department of the Defense. They say Department of the Air Force, but there is no such thing. So, they're just trying to shield somebody giving away no bid contracts. Um, but I did make a video that I will play that part of that at the, or that video at the end of this video. I'll try and keep this quick so then you can watch it. Um, let's see. So, her so Ashley Babbitt was in the Air Force for like fourteen years, I think I said. I think it'll come up here. Um and she was the only one killed that day. And I'm not saying that she knows anything about what Her Prick Harry and Better Up are doing. Maybe she did. I don't know. I'm not saying that she does, but maybe she did. But what did she know being in the Air Force for fourteen years that got her, in my opinion, singled out because there were plenty Plenty of others that you'd think, I mean, if anybody, so. So, Lloyd Austin is Prick Harry's brother, or, uh, friend. He's, um, the second United, uh, United States Secretary of Defense. He was the previously the 12th commander of the United States Central Command, CENTCOM, which is a very big deal, um, and was involved in other military operations. And some other, if anybody does want to go to his Wikipedia page just to find the names of these companies that he did work for, uh, they're pretty interesting companies also. Rayathon was involved in a psychiatric fraud scandal. You can read about that. Um, he was the 12th commander of the Central Command, the vice chief of staff for Obama, um... Director of the Joint Staff for Obama. Jeez, Obama. You're lucky you have those two snubs. Um, United States Central Command, Vice Chief of Staff, United States Forces. I mean, he's he's been all of these things. So he's Lloyd's been around for a while. Lloyd's been around for a very long time. So then that made me think of... Um, Prick Harry says uh, back in, I think it was October, he said that he emailed Jack Dorsey about um, that a coup was taking place on his platform and it was going to happen at the, the next day at the riot. Well, Prick Harry, I have a couple questions. Um, were you in meetings with people about this coup or did you see it on Twitter? Because you're not supposed to be on Twitter, remember? So, how do you know? You can't have it both ways of, why well, I'm not on Twitter, people told me. Well, what do you do talking about it? And, you know, were you meeting with people? 
or are you not on Twitter or are you on Twitter? You can't have it both ways. Can't have it both ways. So then I did a video which I will also put in the description box. Hello, I'm picking this up. I had um, recorded and then I stopped uh, for, I don't know, I was recording this morning and um, it's late now, but I'm starting up again. So I, I don't remember where I was. But anyway, so I, there was a comment I got on a video about <clears throat> if the royal family was being framed and Kate Meyer writes, so H knew about the insurrection before it happened and he emailed Jack Dorsey. So he claims. Did he email Jack Dorsey? That's what he says, but Harry is also a known liar. Um, but he could have emailed him. Uh, and she wrote, and no one else knew, just H. And then videos were uploaded from KP. Cool, because you know that H has a phone that can VPN to KP. VPN is a very private network uh, to Kensington Palace. At least he would have back in uh, January of 2021. So I found that interesting. Um, and I have a lot of text. There were a lot of people trying to frame, t trying to tie on Twitter that I saw. And that would just, I have so many um, tweets of that, that it would, uh, it would have eaten up like the whole video and everything. So there's something going on with Prick Harry. So Prick Harry, were you meeting with somebody? Is that how you knew? Or are you on Twitter? You can't have it both ways, as I think I mentioned before. But he did have a phone that could mess with Kensington Powers, Palace's computers and make things seem like uh, they were doing things there when it could have actually been Prick Harry. And Prick Harry just seems very involved in this January coup, emailing Jack Dorsey, uh, VP, um, you know, Kensington Palace uploads to Parlor. You know, just something's definitely strange going on here. And then, so then that was, and you know, it's called The Insurrection that happened on January 6th, but there was actually a book that was written in 20, 2007 called The Coming Insurrection. And it, it's a, out of France, and it was about um, this exact thing. Uh, a radio host and TV personality that I like a lot, Glenn Beck, has, had been talking about this book for years. That's how I was familiar with it. I actually have the book, but I didn't read the whole thing. But um, The Coming Insurrection pretty much painted what happened that day. And um, I've done some videos about the, uh, you know, I've called social media the um, Fourth Reich is the, uh, the Fourth Reich is the, is social media. And there is an a, um, a video I did, which will be in the box about an article I read about that, um, you know, they're, they're, they're having, you know, France or the government of France or just maybe some French insurrectionists. I'm not, you know, talking about all French people, um, that there's an online French revolution. And it's very similar to how they're, how they had the original French revolution and they're trying to do that here. So the, the, the video will be in the description box also, but there's definitely a lot going on. So back to Ashley Babbitt. Um, why Ashley Babbitt is the question. I don't know. Did Ashley Babbitt know something? Out of all the people you know, I'm going to show you, I'm going to go over some things about her and then I'll, I'll, uh, but this is her. She had a Make America Great hat on. I have one of those and um, I have the American flag here for her and that's her in her military uniform. So I'm just going to read some excerpts from a, an art, from quick, a quick, some quick excerpts from an article from the Washington Post of all places. Um, I found it interesting how they wrote about her. So that's why I chose it. Oh, and, and quickly, so this is where she was killed. I believe she was murdered because she, you'll see from the article, the excerpts, she knew a lot and she was in there for 14 years and she questioned, she questioned, questioned things and had a reputation for it. Um, so this is her, and there's like armed policemen there. Then there's these guys in military uniforms with their, their faces covered. And then that's her just standing there talking. So why was she shot and killed in cold blood? Why? 14-year-old, or a 14-year Air Force veteran. 
I'm not sure if she was in active duty or not still, but, um, you know, there were a lot of trouble, not that anybody should have been killed, but there were a lot of people doing a lot worse things than Ashley Babbitt, and um, they're still alive. After a long, this is the Washington Post again, folks, Jeff Bezos. After a long but undistinguished military career, well, I would think that 14 years is a pretty distinguished career. So they already just have contempt for her. They have contempt for our, our soldiers. After a long but undistinguished military career and years of personal personal travails, Babbitt, a 35-year-old Air Force veteran from Southern California who once supported Barack Obama, so she was a bipartisan person. So she wasn't some crazy right-wing nut QAnon freak like they have everybody painted. She was a bipartisan person. Believed she had found a cause that gave her life pur purpose. Within hours, that cause would bring her life to a violent end. Well, she was just questioning the election. There can't, there's nothing more American than that. Questioning the results of an election, there's nothing wrong with that. Countries cheat, there's rigs are, elections are rigged and cheated and stolen all over the world throughout history. I mean, what is so wrong with that? I, I don't get it. And there were a lot of, um, uh, inconsistencies at best. But it was Babbitt fatally shot by police as she attempted to leap through the broken window of a door inside the Capitol. Well, I, I know there's video of it. I didn't go through it. Maybe she did, maybe she didn't. And that's wrong. If she did that, that's right. If, if she was doing that, I'm not going to say that that's, that was right for her to do. I don't know if she did it or not. I didn't watch the videos. That they're saying that she did. But I don't think that she deserved to be shot and killed in cold blood either. You know, there were other people doing, hanging from this, you know, hanging from the banisters in the, you know, in the cap where the senators and representatives are. I mean, they were doing things. Why weren't they, why weren't they shot? Why her? What did she know? The door inside of a, inside the Capitol, whose name would almost instantly become synonymous with the feverish movement that had propelled thousands of Americans to desecrate a pillar of their government. And that was, um, I put a community post out that said her, earlier, her name was Ashley Babbitt. That's who I'm talking about. Well, if there was cheating going on in the election, wouldn't that be, um, you know, desecrating a pillar of our government, a false fake election with bad results and people's questions. I mean, it's not just one or two people were questioning this election. To her comrades in the movement, she was a martyr. Back in California, Babbitt's brother, Roger Whit Whitho Whitheft, didn't know she didn't even know she had attended the protest before their dad, distraught, called him with the news of the shooting. He found a video online. There was no doubt that it was my beautiful sister, he said. So here's pictures of that day. I'm sure even our international friends have had seen this. I mean, it was probably hard to avoid. You know, all these people are hanging and making noise and fighting. You know, there's co I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. None of them were shot. None of them should have been shot, but none of them were shot. Why Ashley Babbitt in the Air Force? Did she know something? And these are tame pictures. I mean, there are some worse pictures. Babbitt's journey, illuminated through her extensive social media activity, court and military records, and interviews with some who knew her, was one of paranoid devotion. Paranoid devotion. That's the writer's opinion or message that was put out by the, the uh, heads of the Washington Post to um, perpetuate a narrative. Was one of paranoid devotion and, and, and enthusiasm that only increased as Trump's fortunes waned. Well, Ashley Babbitt seems, because she was a Barack Obama supporter, hardly seems like a right-wing radical zealot to have paranoid devotion, her being a soldier and understanding how elections are stolen. Not saying this one was. 
<clears throat> you know, this, she's being painted as, and but why? My thing is, why Ashley Babbitt? She avidly, av she avidly followed the QAnon conspiracy theory, convinced that Trump was destined to vanquish a cabal of child abusers and Satan-worshipping Democrats. Well, what's wrong with that? And there's, you know, there's bad Republicans too, so I'm not going to just put, put Democrats in there. But what is wrong with wanting if, you know, there are cabals of child abusers and Satan worshippers. Which, what's wrong with wanting to get rid of those? Democrat, Republican, whoever. Just what is wrong with wanting to get rid of cabals of child abuser and Satan worshippers? I guess if you're within the cabal of child abusers and sh Satan worshipping, then I guess there is something wrong with, with that, with people wanting to get rid of it. She believed Wednesday would be the storm. That's a QAnon thing. They would say the storm is coming. You know, I guess, uh, you know, not takeover, but the day of reckoning, I guess, if you will. When QAnon mythology holds that Trump would capture and execute his opponents. Well, I'm not sure that it's his opo I mean, I'm not, you know, deep into, I'm, I'm familiar with QAnon. Um, I'm not sure it would be to execute his opponents. I think it would be, be more follow along the lines of executing or punishing the cabal of child abusers and sh Satan worshippers. It has nothing to do with opponents. She served more than a decade in the armed forces, but chafed under but chafed under the military hierarchy. Well, she was a woman. I guess that if you support Trump, you can't play the the woman card can't be applied to you that you suffered under the hierarchy because you're a woman. It's she chafed under the military hierarchy. Period. Because she supported Trump and and QAnon and wanted cabal child abusers and Satan worshippers dealt with. Six of those years were spent in an Air National Guard unit whose mandate is to defend the Washington whose mandate is to defend the Washington region and respond to civil unrest. Its nickname, the Capital Guardians. So Ashley Babbitt was a part of that. Like so many others, she believed January January sixth would not be a day of infamy, but an end to her troubles. I'm not sure. Maybe, yeah, I, and I, I don't know. I obviously don't know Ashley Babbitt, but an end to her troubles. Well, I guess they are all of our individual troubles, but hoping that a, a, an end of, or just straightening out or just being able to question the results, getting honest results that everybody can sign off on. I think that at least from what I'm reading about Ashley Babbitt, if the evidence was presented to her and many others that the election was fair and won fair and square by Joe Biden. People would people can accept fair and square results. They just want to make sure that they're fair and square results. I mean, nobody's unreasonable. If, they, if Trump lost, then he lost. If he won, then he won. But there were a lot there was a lot of uh, malarkey going on in that election, as I'm sure even the international audience saw. Absolutely unafraid. She was fed up with her ex executive officer. It was 2014 and Babbitt, along with much of her Air National Guard unit, then stationed at the al Dafra Air Base in the United Arab Emirates, detested him, according to a former staff sergeant in the unit who spoke on the condition of anonymity because he fears backlash online. So she had an, a problem with an executive officer in the Air Force. No, I don't know what that was about, but what did she know? What the what was the problem? Why Ashley Babbitt? Why her? Out of all the thousand, I would think there were three thousand people in there, or a thousand. Why Ashley Babbitt? But despite her reputation for being outspoken, she kept to herself in she kept herself in check. Then one day, the executive officer slipped new papers into a briefing binder shortly before quizzing service members on its contents. <clears throat> Babbitt asked for permission to speak freely. The former staff sergeant said and the executive the former staff sergeant said and the executive officer granted it, which was a huge mistake for that captain. Oh, so there's an axe to grind. Somebody has an axe to grind against Ashley Babbitt. 
She was like a dog with a bone. The former staff sergeant said she could never let go of whatever her attention was on, and she was absolutely unafraid of anything. Why Ashley Babbitt? Babbitt, who grew up in a small town in the foothills of Southern California's Cuyamaca Mountains, left similarly strong impressions on others who crossed her path. She was a fast talker, whipping through sentences like a, ch like a chinchilla that j had just done a line of cocaine, the staff sergeant said. She escaped punishment for confronting the officer in 2014, according to the airman who served with her, but it was not the only time that her personality put her at odds with the culture and rules of the military. Well, questioning authority, sometimes authorities need to question. Sometimes bad people put uh, are put in uh, positions of power and authority, and that's what the rank and file is supposed to challenge authority and question authority when they see fit. That's their job as soldiers. The, uh, the Constitution says protect against from enemies foreign and domestic. So she was only doing her job if she felt that there was something odd going on. I don't know, but... She deployed at least seven times, so seven tours Ashley Babbitt de did She's as in the Air Force. I'm sure she saw a lot. Why Ashley Babbitt? An Air Force journalist wrote in 2014, and relished the opportunity to mentor new airmen. But discipline issues and insubordination stunted her career. But you don't, I'm sure that Ashley Babbitt didn't run around blaming it on because she was a woman. She was probably just a good airman. Said two former airmen who served with her. She was demoted at least once, they said. For keeping authority in check. Defending against enemies, foreign and domestic. She was demoted. Babbitt left the military in 2016 as a senior airman, a relatively low rank for someone who spent more than a decade in uniform. But she wasn't thrown out. She wasn't court-martialed. She wasn't anything. She just... She saw something. She questioned it. Today we save America. Babbitt would eventually share more than 8,600 tweets offering a vivid account of her dis dissent offering a vivid account of her descent into a world of conspiracy theories and delusion. But her first message was addressed to Trump, the man she believed was destined to rescue her country. Well, hang her up and put her in shackles and drag her to the gulag for believing that Trump would do good for the country. There, there you go. Now I know why it's Ashley Babbitt. Pound Love, she wrote on October 31st, 2016, beside, beside his name in a photo of three signs nailed to a tree, make, make America Great Again, H for Prison, that would be Hillary Clinton, H for Prison, and Christian, deplo Christian Deplorables lived here. Well, there was another mistake that Ashley made. She was a Christian, and we know that, you know, being a Christian, we can't have that anymore either. A week later on election day, she wrote to Trump again, Today we save America from the tyranny, collusion, and corruption. When he won, when he won, Babbitt cried. Well, what's wrong with that? A lot of people wrote that. A lot of people wrote that kind of stuff, you know, through the years. And then a lot of people were at, that, did, that wrote that were at the January 6th, quote-unquote, insurrection. But my question is, whose insurrection was it really? I'll do another video on that. Um, so why then Ashley Babbitt? Killed a Babbitt. <laughs> if you remember Looney Tunes, killed a Wabbit, killed a Babbitt. So I don't... Uh... She was an avid viewer of Fox News. <gasps> the horror! Praising Tucker Carlson. Oh no, anybody but Tucker Carlson. And other far-right media personalities. And again, this is the Washington Post on the network as she derided their liberal targets. A registered libertarian, she hadn't always despised Democrats, declaring at least three times in recent years that she voted for Obama.
I think Obama did great things. I think he jacked some shite up, she wrote in November 2018. But I think he did do a lot of good at a time when we needed him. I also, I agree with that, Ashley Babbitt. While I don't totally, I'm not lock and step with Barack Obama, there are things that I, I actually like Barack Obama on personally. Uh, and there are some things that I like that he did. Not, not that many, but there are some things. We are being hoodwinked, she wrote in July. The sheep need to wake up. On December 29th, eight days before her death, she discovered a tweet from Vice President-elect Kamala Harris promising to distribute more vaccines, promote mask wearing, promote mask wearing and get students back to school. Babbitt wrote, know the, know the F you will not. Okay, well, so she tweeted that, I guess, to Kamala Harris, but a lot of people as Christopher Boozy is doing a report on, you know, Kamala Harris hate accounts, a lot of people tweet things at the vice president. A lot of people that were at the January 6th, I'm sure, tweeted things at the then soon-to-be vice president. So why Ashley Babbitt? Why her? Why was she killed in cold blood by a police officer when she was standing there? They said she was trying to get through a window. Maybe she was. I don't know doesn't matter. She wasn't the only one. <clears throat> In the week leading up to her trip to Washington for the Trump demonstration, however, her online fury receded, replaced with glee and a new sense of mission. She retweeted dozens of figures promoting Trump's demands that his supporter gathered to overturn the election. Well, I'm not really sure that that's for his demands, but again, this is the Washington Post. Including Trump supporter Jack Posobiec, of course, he's got to get in here, my buddy Jack. QAnon activists, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, and Donald Trump Jr. I'll be there tomorrow, she wrote January 4th in response to another supporter heading to the nation's capital. Godspeed. So it was known that Ashley Babbitt had made public, she didn't just tell some friends privately that she was going to be at this thing. It was known. She put it out for the world to see. And then a lot of the police officers just opened the gates and, and let people in, which is entrapment. If it was illegal to go into the Capitol building, why did they let them in? Why Ashley Babbitt? It was Ashley Babbitt and I just think a few police officers that killed themselves the next day in the days and weeks coming. Did they kill themselves? Why did they kill themselves or did they? What did they know? It is unclear exactly how and when Babbitt entered the Capitol. Okay, well, that's interesting because there's cameras everywhere. She undoubtedly understood law enforcement could use de deadly force in response to the breach. Yes, but said law enforcement let everybody in. Airmen in the role Babbitt once occupied in the D.C. Air National Guard's 113th Air Wing received riot control training, and her former unit, unit was mobilized to protect the Capitol on Wednesday. So then how, how out of sorts could Ashley Babbitt have been acting? But it has since become clear what happened inside. The raging crowd that bashed in the windows of a barricaded door to the Speaker's lobby with a short tanned woman in an American back pack at the front of its ranks. Her attempt to climb through one of those windows leading the way despite a Capitol Police officer pointing a handgun in her direction. The, ab the abrupt way she toppled backward after a single shot resounded. Should she have been shot? What about tasers? What about just pulling her out or having the other cops help you pull her out? Why Ashley Babbitt? Why was she killed in cold blood? And it was clear how she left. At about 3 p.m., a team of paramedics rushed a gurney to an ambulance parked at the southeast corner of the building. On it was Babbitt, staring listlessly in the direction of the building she had just tried to occupy, the place where her dreams of revitalizing, of a revitalizing storm were supposed to come true. Blood ran from her nose and covered half of her face. Her eyes were on the verge of closing. Riot police guarded the ambulance as its doors closed and pulled it away, and, pu and it pulled away. 
And that night, the night Babbitt died far from her home and family, Congress affirmed as true what she had died denying. Donald Trump would not remain president. Nice article, Washington Post. So here's just some other, and these aren't even bad, here's some other photographs of what was going on within the Capitol building that day. You have this gentleman up here in the mask sitting in the, uh, I guess that was in the, that's in the Senate's or the Speaker's chair, the Senate's chair. So there's somebody in there where they actually like somebody, the head of the se the Senate or the Vice President, who's the President of the Senate, would sit. He's sitting there. You have guns drawn and these people on the ground. You have these guys down here on the bottom. One looks like he could have a suicide vest on or a bulletproof vest or a, a bomb. Why wasn't he shot? Why weren't these people shot? Especially with the one that looks like he's got a suicide vest on or a bulletproof vest or, or, or a bomb. He's just walking around, and actually Babbitt was shot. Then up in here in the hallway, there's these smoke, and the smoke was brought in by, like, the protesters who, that smoke is a key sign and call sign uh, mark of Antifa, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. Look at that staging area with, you know, the noise, and not staging, but noise and smoke and everything. Why wasn't anybody shot in the fog of war, if you will, or the confusion? Why Ashley Babbitt just standing there in the hallway? And if she was trying to crawl through, so what? what why is this guy walking around with his vest on? So this is where she was shot here with, you know, with these. So that doesn't look like there was much going on there, and that's just her standing there. I guess there's the window, and then what's with these military? Why are they there? What jurisdiction do they have? Who are they? They have military outfits on. I don't know. I'm just asking the questions. But that doesn't look, the scene that Ashley Babbitt is in doesn't look like one of the more dangerous scenes that was going on that day within that building for her to be shot. So again, one more time, what did she know? Did she know anything about anything upcoming with Better Up? Was Better Up already doing things? She was in the Air Force, and that's, and, you know, and the fact that Prick Harry was involved in all this January 6th stuff and the coup, you know, and emailing Jack Dorsey and Kensington Palace and the VPN and Vice Pre or President Biden and his wife. And did Ashley Babbitt know something that there that was going on in the Air Force? Does, is Lloyd Austin familiar with Ashley Babbitt? What was uh, Prick Harry's buddy Lloyd Austin? You know, the one that all uh, the Sussex squad was reporting us all to, Lloyd Austin. So there's definitely, in my opinion, something amok here. She knew something. Now, about who and what is the question. But since Prick Harry has inserted himself into our Air Force and the January 6th thing on multiple levels through Kensington Palace and Jack Dorsey, say, saying he's not on Twitter but there's a coup, who is he meeting with? What did Lloyd Austin know? What has he said about Ashley Babbitt? What does the president know? But I don't think it was a, an accident. If it was an accident... It was a one in a gazillion chance accident that somebody in the Air Force got murdered in cold blood by a police officer. So I am now going to play a video about Precarious no bid contracts and a little bit about Better Up and um, what they're doing with the Air Force and how shady that is. And um, that will be so. You should watch, if you haven't seen it, it's an older, it's a video I've done before. If you haven't seen it, I suggest you watch it. You, it'll curl your toes. If you have seen it, this will be the end of the, this part. And um, I'll give a goodbye at the, end of, at the end of the video. Hang on.
April 1945, the last days of the Third Reich. Some of the Führer's last defenders were adolescents, not yet 15 years old. Their only goal was to protect their leader, Adolf Hitler. Up against the Soviets, they had no chance of winning. But only a few years earlier, they had sworn to give their lives for Hitler. They would stand by their promise and see it through to the end. Who were these boy soldiers? How did the regime win their absolute loyalty? Some of these boys are still alive today. Volk und Vaterland, äh, wenn es notwendig ist, also auch das Leben zu opfern, das fanden wir eigentlich für selbstverständlich. They know what it meant to grow up during the Nazi era. Ein Volk, ein Führer, ein Reich. Dieses the Reich, hat man the Fourth Reich. Uns eingeprägt. Es gab keinen anderen Führer, nur ein Führer gab es. Und der wurde angehimmelt bis dort hinaus. How did these boys get caught up in the darkness of Nazism? They were the future of the regime, its showcase, and its cannon fodder. So this video is called Prick Harry, the United States Air Force, and Mental Health. Now, one of my, our esteemed colleagues alerted me to that Prick Harry, it's a uh, company that he's involved with where he's the chief impact officer, Better Up, has been awarded a United States military contract through the Air Force to give his uh, Better Up stuff services to. Um, which is, you know, Harry, Prince Harry, mental health, United States Air Force. You know, what are they doing? What's he doing? Because I know I'm almost 100% sure positive that airline pilots, commercial airline pilots, and I would think especially pilots, whether it's in the Navy or the Army or the Air Force, are not allowed to fly planes if they have have or have had mental health issues. Now, while that may seem discriminatory, it's prudent. I mean, it's, you know, there's people's lives and everything. So, And I don't think that even if they're, you know, taking any psychiatric drugs, like even such a, like something as simple as, um, you know, an antidepressant, I don't think they're able to fly planes either because the a side effect of like an antidepressant could make you want to kill yourself or you know they don't need people pl flying planes you know and then thinking I want to kill myself and then crash the plane I mean that's understandable so so then it made you know Prince H Prick Harry being the mental health warrior that he is now I do not I am not debating that Prince Harry probably has mental health issues. I am not disparaging him for that at all. It's completely understandable. What I am disparaging him for is what he's up to using his mental health struggles to push further frightening agendas. And Prince Harry and mental health coaching and being involved with our Air Force pilots to me was rather frightening but so I'm going to show you how frightening it is but then after I looked into it some more and when I'm reading this to you it is going to sound frightening but you're going to have to stay with me until the end the very end you're going to have to stay with me because it just because so let's get started oh prick Harry prick Harry prick Harry prick Harry <clears throat> So this is Alexei Robichaw. 
I guess that's how, yeah, Robert Shaw. I guess that's how you would say his name. He is the co-founder and CEO of Better Up. Recognized as a leadership and development innovator, Alexi is the co-founder and CEO of BetterUp, the first leadership development platform to connect coaching to sustainable, which is a BS word. They use that for, you know, green stuff. Anyway, coaching to sustainable behavior change. Okay, well, now that's great and fine and all, but I don't really want my the people in the United States Air Force flying, flying planes having any behavioral changes, nor do I understand why they would need behavioral change. Unless it would be, you know, political change, you know, their political view change standpoint. So it does get pretty scary, scary folks. But again, you're going to have to wait till the end here. <clears throat> so, better up, and if you'd noticed before, like, when you first started hearing about Prick Harry and Better Up, Better Up used to have like a little light bulb next to it. Like it looked like a mental health light bulb, you know, like a, I think it was like a, a logo. Um, it was like blue and orange and a light bulb. Like, you know, hey, Better Up, we're going to make you feel better, Better Up. Well, this is from their website. It's just a plain Better Up and that's fine. So Better Up partners with the United States Air Force to provide virtual learning and development program. Okay, fair enough. I still have my concern. You know, I'm still like, okay, this was on December 16th, so okay. London. Prince Harry has joined Silicon Valley startup better up as its chief chief impact officer and that's concerning because now i'm starting to think well a chief imp we all thought it was a, a bs uh title and it is sort of but i don't want Ch precary impacting my military when i say mine i mean uh, you know my american military i don't want him i don't want precary having an impact on anything let alone them after stepping back from Britain's royal family, uh, quitting his family. Forget about it, bitches. Forget about it being Britain's royal family. He just quit his own, he just quit his family. And then he quit on Britain's royal family and his own country, but anyway. And moving to California with wife Megan. Founded in San Francisco in 2013, well, it's hardly a startup. It was a startup at one time. So that's a, a smoke show. Oh, Prince Harry's startup for mental health. Okay. Better Up is coaching and mental... Better Up is a coaching and mental health platform. Now notice that they have Prince Harry in here. They put mental health in here because Prick Harry. You know, because he talks about his mental health. Fair enough. Like I said, the kid, the, the kid clearly has issues going on. Multiple and on many levels and many. The company was most recently valued at $1.73 billion. Does that sound like a startup company to you? Following a $1.125 million investment round. So, Prick Harry, the Duke of Sussex chief impact officer and this is what it says on their website prince harry the duke of sussex is a human humanitarian really because i don't see him doing anything but okay military veteran uh he was a military veteran now i'm gonna say he's a military deserter deserted his post mental wellness advocate okay see now so they changed this from mental health advocate to mental wellness advocate and environmentalist yet to say anything about that other than lots of private jets as co-founder of archwell he is focused on driving systematic change i don't want pre precary changing anything across all communities through nonprofit work his nonprofit that only raised 50 grand uh -huh. and then they were in the red because they spent more money than they raised and so then anyway work as well as creative activations. The mission across Archwell, which currently includes Archwell 
foundation. Oh, so Archwell being it's it's a business, it only just includes their foundation, which is supposed to be their charity. So it's like, oh yeah, that Archwell Productions and Archwell Audio is united behind the deeply held benefit. The compassion is the defining cultural force of the 21st century or the illusion of compassion. So, about Better Up. Found in 2013, Better Up is a human transformation company. Well, that doesn't sound too cozy for my Air Force pilots, or even people just working in the Air Force, or in the military, whatever, that dares to innovate the future of work by helping people and businesses grow. Businesses. Grow personally and professionally to reach peak performance and maximize their potential through coaching content community and cutting edge AI, AI technology fabulous that's all that's great stay away from my military better up is the inventor of virtual coaching and the largest mental health and coaching startup in the world with the world's largest network of over 3,000 coaches offering support in 46 languages this is hardly a startup. That's this is some this is some startup, folks. Across 90 countries, trusted by more than 300 organizations including NASA. Well, that's concerning. Google, Snap, Hilton, Warner Media and other leading Fortune 1000 companies. Better up delivers on three key impact areas: mental fitness, career and leadership development and social connection inspiring people everywhere to live with greater clarity purpose and passion better up science board is composed of leading researchers in the fields of positive psychology and human performance including martin seligman adam grant blah 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 better up coaching has seen to blah 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 these results, stress management, these results are typically seen after only three to four months of coaching. Well, that doesn't sound like a good business model to me, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, who start out low in those areas, better up has been recognized, blah, blah, blah. So, okay. So, there's some troubling things in there. But non-troubling things when we get to the end. So, the program will support U.S. Air Force coaching culture. San Francisco, California, December 16th. Better Up, the human transformation company, which again is very troubling. An inventor, inventor of virtual coaching announced today an award of a sole source contract. So, I bet you that was a no-bid contract. Sole source is just a way of hiding that it was a no-bid contract. By the Department of the Air Force, which ultimately falls under the Department of Defense, but we'll get there. Well, Harry's good buddy, Lloyd Austin, is the uh, Secretary of Defense. You know his buddy. No-bid contract. Sole source at no-bid. Air Force, through the Small Business Innovation Research, Small Business Technology. Oh, a technology transfer program. Kind of like the technology... Tech transfer thing they're doing with uh, Chelsea Clinton. Oh, I didn't see that when I first glanced over that. Lots of tech transfers going on around. Ha. Huh. To enroll, I'll have to look into that later. Because literally, I just kind of glanced through this up here. To enroll more than 1,500 airmen and guardians across multiple Air Force major commands, including the newly established Space Force. Oh, I thought Space Force was a, was a joke. Because when Trump started that, it was a joke. Now that now that Trump's not in and they're doing business space forces, something. Okay. Airmen and Guardians have access to International Coaching Federation. Well, I don't like that. I don't like anything with International Federation when it comes to my military, but whatever. Certified individual coaching and group coaching is part of a program designed to further propel a coaching culture across the Air Force. Better Up was also des designated into the Program Objective Memorandum Streamlining the Procurement Process for Partner 
agencies? Well, I have to look into that, but because procurement is just a fancier way of saying purchasing. There's just a strategy. It's purchasing, which is buying. It's just procurement. There's a strategy behind it. So I'll have to get into that later. I just wanted to get this video up. Better Up coaches work with Air Force members to develop new perspectives, help them achieve greater clarity, which you'd think this would all be up to the military, but we'll get there, and inspire them to achieve their personal and professional potential. The pro program also features access to BetterUp's artificial intelligence-driven learning platform and proprietary assessments, enabling service men members to leverage personalized development content as a force multiplier to coaching. We are honored that the U.S. Air Force is trusting BetterUp through its no-bid contract as a, uh, as a resource in the personal growth and professional development of airmen. Pay attention to these words, folks, for the end here, said Alexi Robichaw, co-founder co and CEO of BetterUp. From our early days of building BetterUp, oh, I thought you were in your early days, okay. We were fortunate enough to learn from senior leaders of the armed forces about peak performance, leadership, and coaching as a means to build trust, alignment, and strength through vulnerability for leaders and team members. Great. As part of, as part of the Better Up Coaching initiative... Air Force members have access to one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, curated content, and digital learning tools, as well as specialist support in topics like nutrition and sleep. Sounds great. Nutrition and sleep are very good for everybody. Air Force personnel can schedule and meet with coaches using their personal devices via BetterUp's SaaS platform. The one-on-one -on -one coaching offer, offering lever leverages BetterUp's whole person model, which has been aligned with the Air Force coaching teamwork. Fabulous. The group coaching offering will provide the opportunity for small groups of Air Force members to engage in collaborative learning on specific topics such as performance coaching and providing constructive feedback via coach facilitated sessions. The coaching partnership complements the Department of the Air Force's existing mentorship and force development programs. This initial program has potential for expansion after assessing its success and taking feedback from participants. Now, that's a bunch of garbage. Not that what they're saying. It's just a bunch of PR, sales. I mean, this is a sales. This is a PR. I mean, it is, you know, I mean, it's they're selling a coaching service. So... At the beginning of this video, and this is Lloyd Austin, the director of defense, Harry's buddy. They are buddies. Him and Harry did that whole veterans thing. You know, they are friends. That's no secret. So at the beginning of this video, and at the beginning when you hear, heard about it, it all seemed sort of frightening. You know, prick Harry and his mental health impacting... United States Air Force pilots and personnel, etc. But then, when, as I started digging into it, especially coming after the no bid contract and everything, and you know, Prince Harry's just being, you know, such a, such a, uh, a mental health warrior. That's just a load of garbage. Prince Harry is a grifter. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying anything better up, or better. Uh, I'm not saying anything bad about Better Up as a company. They probably, they're just a, a, a coaching company. I mean, this is a sales thing. I mean, I've been through a million sales classes. They do this. It's, companies buy them. They are beneficial. That's fine. They worked with Fortune 1000 companies, right? I mean, that that's anybody that's been management, been in management, uh, they do that and they are useful. What I am saying is, 
Prince Harry, you know, oh, mental health is grifting. Because these people aren't about mental health. They're about mental clarity and mental fitness and all of that for, you know, salespeople and management and things like that. You know, is this going to be beneficial to the military? I doubt it. Because the military is all, knows all about how to get people mentally fit and clarity and coaching and everything. I'm pretty sure that the the military is probably the best at that. So Prick Harry probably brought this deal in and got a cut of it. We know we got a cut of it. And, you know, bringing all this, oh, it's for mental health. Oh, I'm doing this for mental health. No, Prick Harry did this to get a government contract, a military contract. Now, while I find that highly annoying... I also don't get annoyed with it because our government gives our, uh, I'm over being annoyed with our government just throwing money at people for useless things. So it doesn't even bother me anymore. So Prince, Harry, Prince Harry's involved in the mental health thing, blah, blah, blah. He's such a mental health warrior. Prince Harry is such a mental health warrior. Meanwhile, if you look up there, if you look up there, uh, you know, um, consumer feedback of just regular people that use that they talk about how it sucks um you know it's shitty to work there you know it's expensive blah 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 blah, blah. so i doubt our military is even using this it was a no bid contract given and this is my opinion but you know i'm been around the block i know how things go this is no big contract because you notice if they say the air force They say the Air Force because they don't want to say the Department of Defense who is actually awarding the contract because that would raise, raise red flags. So they just, that's why they said the Department of the Air Force. Well, there is no Department of the Air Force. As far as I know, I could, I could be wrong. But I've never heard of it. Um, Harry got... So they're promoting Harry. Harry's involved in this new startup company that's already been in business for two, uh, since 2013 with billions of dollars. And again, I'm not bashing Better Up. I mean, I'm sure that they, you know, they're working for whatever they do. They're selling it. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's great. I don't know. But how it's be pre being presented, Harry and his startup company, and they raised all this money, and Harry cares about mental health. Now, Harry got a no-bid co government contract from the Department of Defense, because he's friends with this dude, in my opinion. So it's just another grift. Harry doesn't give a shite about anybody's mental health. And from where I can see, he doesn't give a shit about his own. So, so whenever you hear... And hey, Prick Harry, if you want to go and get no big mid, no bid government contracts from people, go get them. You know, I mean, yeah, you know, whatever. I mean, it's just, you know, whatever. But stop with being fake about it. Anytime you hear about Prick Harry doing something good, he's just doing it for money, which is fine. I'm not, I don't, you know, I'm not condemning the dude for making money. Just be honest about it. That's why people can't stand you. That's why people can't stand you. You're a grifter. You're a fake. You're getting no bid contracts from the Department of the D Defense. Oh, the Department of the Air Force. No, it's the Department of Defense. So here we are again with just the smoke and mirrors. It's just a PR. It's all fake. You know, like I said, this this video started off scary, and now it's just a joke, like everything else about Prince Harry and his wife. So, if you like my channel, please subscribe, hit the like and notification button, etc., etc. I will see everybody tomorrow. Auf Wiedersehen! And that's a wrap. Look forward to everybody's comments and or questions. See you later.